Ladies and gentlemen, hobos and tramps, cross-eyed mosquitoes and bow-legged ants. Oops, wrong audience. Hello friends of the sea. This presentation is to introduce you to some new friends in the ocean. Let me introduce you to my friend the grouper. The grouper is in a class of fish that grows to over 400 pounds. Its mouth gets so large that a grown man could put his whole head inside. The grouper in this picture has learned that the diver is not there to threaten him, but is a good source of food. He is hanging around for a handout. Grouper are all born female. It is not until there is a need to reproduce that the largest female turns slowly into a male. That fish then grows larger and fertilizes the eggs of all the females in the area. It takes several years for the female grouper to become a male and grow to its large size. When man catches the largest fish, he is also killing the male and there are no more baby fish hatched until another female can change sexes. We need to know this if we are to make sure that there are plenty of fish for everyone to eat. Fish get parasites on them that are harmful to them, so they have a symbiotic relationship with the cleaner shrimp. The shrimp have cleaning stations where the fish can come and park themselves while the shrimp eat all the bugs off them. The fish could easily eat the shrimp, but knows that the shrimp is helping him, so he opens his mouth and lets the shrimp climb around inside to clean his teeth and gills. Aren't you glad you have toothpaste to clean your teeth? Our friend the tarpon grows to about 4 feet long and they are very fast swimmers. Even though these are fairly large fish, they scurry away when man shows up. Wrecks can be a good addition to the ocean because they are a good base for corals to attach to, and these corals become a home for fish. By this process, artificial reefs are created. The wrecks are also home to many smaller fish that can hide there from larger fish that would eat them. This is what is left of the Oro Verde, a small freighter who fought a good fight with a heavy storm and lost. It sank straight up among the rocks and coral. This is the Paulson wreck. It was an aging tugboat deliberately sunk after it was stripped of its engines to make an artificial reef. In time, coral and fish will take it over. dive. Divers can become caught under the deck or snag themselves on a sharp piece of steel. The last thing you want to do is cut yourself underwater. Even if the blood does not attract a shark, the cut won't stop bleeding while you are underwater. It is difficult to see blood underwater because the red light is filtered out of the sunlight when it travels through the water. The blood may appear black and the diver may not see it.
This fish behavior is known as fish fry. Small fish are called fry. The spider crab grows to the humongous size of four inches. Let me introduce you to the spiny lobster. It is a nocturnal animal. Nocturnal means that it sleeps during the day and comes out of its hole at night to hunt for food. This Caribbean lobster does not have the large claws of the main lobster. Here's one of our funny looking friends, the cowfish, so called because of his horns. The parrotfish gets its name from its bright colors. Doesn't it remind you of a Macau parrot? Next to it is a false eye butterfly fish. It has an extra eye painted on its tail. This way, another fish, thinking it might eat him, couldn't tell whether he's coming or going. Our friend the crab is munching his lunch. He is a scavenger which helps keep the ocean bottom clean. The squid is a shy animal, usually found out and about at night. Squid are a major source of food for whales. And in most Asian countries, the squid is a delicacy. It is cooked in many ways, sometimes on a stick over an open flame and served like a popsicle. It is called, you guessed it, squid on a stick. This squid has had enough of the bright video lights and tries to hide its escape behind a cloud of ink. The octopus is related to the squid and comes in many colors and shapes. It is known as the Houdini of the sea because it is a great escape artist. It can mold its body into any shape and squeeze through very small holes. It is also a camouflage artist. It can quickly change color to blend with its surroundings. Watch it carefully as it changes colors. This is one of nature's more creepy critters and it might give you nightmares if you saw it in your bedroom. But don't worry, the octopus is shy and will hide if it can. This is a small jellyfish. A larger jellyfish. And a very large jellyfish, over two feet across. You have to be careful of jellyfish because they can sting you. Our friend the stingray is getting too friendly. Maybe it likes the taste of the shampoo the diver used in her hair. Or maybe it thinks she is hiding some food. But the diver thinks the ray is getting too close and pushes it away. Stingrays don't really have stingers. They have a sharp barb near the base of their tails which is not really a stinger because it does not have any poison in it. The only time a person has to worry about getting stuck with that barb is if he steps on the ray. So when you are walking on a beach, be careful not to step on our friend the ray, and he will treat you as a friend also. Divers have been diving this area for the last 20 years, and no one has been stung yet. Rays don't have any teeth. They don't need to because they don't choose their food. They eat very small things which they filter out of the water through the filters built into their mouths. Rays feel soft and smooth when you touch them. Most of them like to be touched. I guess since they don't have any hands like you and I, they like it when somebody scratches them. Can you imagine having an itch and not having any hands to scratch it? Stingray City at Grand Cayman is always a lot of fun. The stingrays have a good sense of smell for food and check out all the divers for the frozen squid pieces they carry. The large ones are female and the small ones are males. My friend the turtle usually grows to about three feet long. The turtle swims many miles during its lifetime. It doesn't live in just one spot. It breathes air like you and I, 
but it can hold its breath for an hour. It can even hold its breath while sleeping. This spotted eagle ray is digging up its lunch. It digs through the sand and sifts the sand through its filters in the back of its mouth. I guess it's not bothered by sand in its mouth. I don't think I'd like to eat this way. See how the sand drops out through the filters as he swims away. We must have woke our friend the moray eel up from his nap. The manta ray is one of nature's more graceful creatures. It is a gentle giant growing to over 15 feet across. It glides through the water like a B-1 bomber. Like the aircraft, the ray does aerobatic loops. I guess you would call them aquabatic loops. Manta rays are only dangerous to us because of their large size. Don't let the large mouth frighten you because they only eat plankton. Plankton are very tiny living organisms, small animals, as small or smaller than a mosquito. It couldn't swallow any part of you. These divers dove at night to watch the underwater aquabatic show. It looks like fun. I wish I could swim like that. To attract the plankton, the divers put bright lights in the sand. The eyes of these creatures are on the sides of their head. They are also very friendly and let divers touch them gently. This is a fish swirl. Are these fish having a round table discussion or are they chasing each other's tails? The clownfish is fun to watch. It looks like they are playing in a plant, but the plant is actually a type of animal. It is poisonous to most fish and will sting a fish if it tries to eat it. It is known as an anemone. The clownfish and the anemone are friends, and the clownfish is not hurt by the poison like other fish. The clownfish does not try to eat the anemone because it uses the anemone's natural defenses to protect itself by hiding in the poisonous tentacles. I don't know if the lionfish is our friend. I'm afraid to touch him. He has poisonous spines all over him that are poisonous enough to kill a diver. But he's never tried to hurt me, so if I leave him alone, he'll probably leave me alone. Do you think he's ugly enough to be pretty? This little fish wiggles violently when he feels afraid. It does this to look larger and more intimidating. The twin-eyed goby has two false eyes to confuse a predator. A predator is another creature that would eat him. The fish is having dinner, rotating bottom gravel through its mouth and stripping it of algae. This is a school of skipjack, also known as trevelis, participating in a fish squirrel. These barracuda are about three feet long and have very sharp teeth. They don't mean to be unfriendly, but their normal food source is shiny, and if you wear something shiny while diving or swimming, they may think it's food. 
They may bite before they think. The killer whale is poorly named as it does not kill people. It eats sea lions and fish and is usually friendly to people. The Caledonia stinger is related to the scorpion fish. It is very venomous on the tips of the dorsal fins. Those are the back fins. And the pectoral fins. Those are the fins on its side. The fish does not swim anymore but prefers to crawl along the bottom. Its pectoral fins have changed to creepers. Maybe it was a fish like this that first crawled out of the sea millions of years ago to make the land its home. You better watch out. I've got a big mouth. I'm going to eat you alive. Is this shrimp applauding as we swim by? He certainly seems excited about something. He's only about an inch long and almost so transparent that you can see through him. This is our friend the flatworm, sometimes called a Spanish dancer. The way he swims looks like he's dancing. This is a more colorful flatworm. This is a nudibranch. I don't know why nudibranchs have such hard names to pronounce and remember. This is a Hexabranchus sanguinis. Remember that, we might have a test on it later. Nudibranchs don't have eyes. The little horns on their heads are called rhinophores, which act like noses. They use their nose to find their way around. This is a Chromodorus. This is a Hypsilodorus perpercula maculosa. Boy, that's a mouthful. And speaking of mouthfuls, this is a Petraolodida ianthina. I'd like to introduce you to our friend the cuttlefish. Would you like him to cuddle up to you with all those arms? This is soft coral. It is very flexible and wavers in the current like feathers. This is a frogfish, named for the way it hunts. It sits quietly like a frog waiting for a fly to buzz by. And when something good swims by, it snaps it up. Take a look at its little feet. Here's another funny looking puffer fish. These look like snakes, but they're not. They're garden eels. If you had a garden, do you think you could plant these in your garden? They are charming and dance stylishly, but they are very shy and disappear quickly when one gets too close. This little octopus has definitely decided he prefers Coke to Pepsi. He has chosen this Coke cap to be his home, a place to hide, and his shield to protect him from those who would eat him. It is his prized possession. He takes it with him everywhere. He just had a crab for lunch, and since he doesn't have a doggy bag, he is using one of his eight arms to store the leftovers for dessert. Bet you can't see me now. Peekaboo! Are you still out there? Go away. You're too big. I don't want to play. Well... Maybe I'll play hide and seek with you. How do you get that much octopus in such a tiny space? Watch as he comes out how large he gets.
A baby pupperfish tries to get away from me, but is blocked by coral. Maybe he thinks he's in prison. Soft coral comes in many shapes, colors, and sizes. Many believe that the shark is a bad fish. First of all, it's not a fish, because it doesn't have any bones like a fish. Second, it usually could care less about people. We are not large enough to frighten it, and we are not what it regularly eats. So usually, if you leave it alone, it will leave you alone. Our friend the spiny pufferfish has been frightened by the big mean diver and has swallowed water to puff himself up to a large size. When he puffs up it causes his spines to stick out. Anything that would dare to swallow him now would get a very bad tummy ache. Our friend the green moray eel likes to have its belly rubbed. The Queen Angel is a beautiful iridescent blue. A beautiful green nudibranch is found munching on a small plant. The little flower-like thing on its back is its lungs. The lungs are on the outside of the body. Fortunately, it can suck its lungs into its body to protect them when it needs to. These two nudibranchs are mating. The Chromodorus reticulate descends a coral head in search of food. These Chromodorus Elizabethina are either having a meeting or heard a buffet lunch was available here on this sponge. The dolphin is a well-known and respected friend of ours. The dolphin is playful, intelligent, and has never been known to hurt a person. They swim together in groups called pods. They are like us in many ways. They breathe air, they socialize, play together, work together, and they communicate with each other. They also have babies in the same way humans do. Dolphins like to show off how well they can swim by racing past the boat and diving in and out of the water in front of the moving boat. Apparently it isn't fun for them unless the boat is moving because as soon as the boat stops they stop too. The last of my friends I would like you to meet is the gray whale. These whales swim all the way from Alaska to San Ignacio Bay in Mexico to have their babies. The whales in these pictures are baby whales. They like to be scratched and petted and are curious about the two-legged critters that have to stay in the boat and can't come down to play in the water. Mama is always close by to protect her baby, but doesn't object to the babies playing with the humans. It's too bad we can't speak their language because I'm sure they could tell us a story or two we've never heard. Scientists are trying to learn how to speak whale and dolphin, but we cannot make the sounds they do. Well, I hope you've enjoyed meeting my friends of the sea, and someday we'll be able to help me protect those oceans for our friends to live in. We need to protect the ocean, because it is the source of much of our food and the air we breathe.